Welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be talking about five packing tips that you should always follow on your cruise. And to make things a bit more challenging, let's see if I can do it in less than five minutes. If you enjoyed this video, I hope you subscribe. Let's get started. So first and foremost, you want to make sure that you pack a carry-on bag before you actually get onto the ship. This carry-on bag should have all of your essentials for that day. Remember, when you check into the ship, you're going to give them your big baggage, which will later on be delivered to your room. But it might take up to 6 or 7 p.m., even later sometimes, to get your bags. If that happens, you want to make sure you have some of the essentials so when you get on the ship by, let's say, 11, 12, or even 1 p.m., you can jump into the pool or do whatever you need to start enjoying your vacation. So be mindful and bring that carry-on bag with you, of course, to make sure that you don't check it in. Next, you want to plan each outfit for every day that you're going to be on the ship. So whatever you're wearing every morning and afternoon, depending on whether you're on the ship, whether you're on the beach, or possibly on an excursion, and then a separate outfit for every evening for dinner and etc. that adheres to the dress code, which we'll cover in a second. And once you have all of that, you basically have your packing list. Now a pro tip here is to use capsule wardrobes. Now a capsule wardrobe is basically using a limited number of bottoms and tops that can mix and match with each other to combine a ton of different outfits. So try to reduce some of the things that you pack because you know you probably pack too much. Next, if you want to save space, I suggest using packing cubes. This is not something that I believed in, but they're quite amazing to be honest. Packing cubes are like little containers that you have for your suitcase, which allow you to basically roll your items into them, stuff them in there, and they just save a lot of space. Plus they keep your stuff organized and you can take all of the stuff that you already worn and put it back into the packing cube as well, saving you space. They're really amazing. As you can see right here, you can fit tons and tons of things into your suitcase and packing cube will allow you to basically maximize the amount of space that you have in that suitcase. There are tons of different brands out there. Just Google the best ones and get them. I'm not sponsored or anything, but I, I use Peak Design. Those are my favorite ones. Now, speaking about clothing, some of the ships will actually allow you to do your own laundry, while others will definitely offer dry cleaning services for, of course, extra charges. Now, you got to be careful here. I only really suggest washing undergarments, undershirts, maybe socks, things like that. Personally, I don't trust any of my really expensive clothing to anyone but my home dry cleaner. It's up to you if you're okay with someone else washing your stuff or doing laundry. You can, you know, have a significant reduction in the amount of stuff that you bring with you because you can basically have it washed. They take one or two days to get back to you and some cruise lines will even run laundry days. It's actually kind of cool. Basically, as much stuff as you can stuff into a laundry bag for a set price. Otherwise, it, it can really add up if you just like ask them to wash each thing separately. It can actually be a pretty big bill. That's why I really try to wash only my undergarments. But like I said, on those days where they have those laundry bag things, it's definitely worth it. You can stuff a whole bunch of clothes and get it washed for a very reduced price. Now, while you're packing, you also want to consider formal night attire because each cruise is probably going to have one or two formal nights which will sort of basically expect you to dress up in one way or another. Now depending on the cruise line this can range from just slacks and a button-up shirt you know in a polo possibly to a full suit with a jacket or, or a tie and maybe even a tux like a lot of places really go kind of crazy depending on on the cruise line now a lot of the mainstream cruise lines are kind of really relaxed about this nowadays just remember that there are usually two formal nights per cruise most people will dress to impress when going to dinner on those nights and you will also have many opportunities to take photos and show off your attire. So your best bet would be to at least, you know, bring business casual attire if you sort of want to fit in. 
Another small but very important pro tip for you, if you have a spouse or a partner, it's a good idea to cross pack your suitcases. So put some of your stuff in one suitcase and some of your stuff in the other suitcase. That way, if one gets lost, you still have half your stuff. Now a bunch of other really important tips for you. Make sure to bring small bills with you for either tips, or actually on the islands themselves, if you have to pay for a cab and so on, it's really important to have small bills with you. Bring your passport and make sure it does not expire at least six months from the date that you come back. This is really important. They will not let you go on a cruise unless you have at least six months of buffer on your passport from the day that you actually get back. Another good idea is to probably take, get a copy of that passport, maybe even take a picture of it and put it on your phone in case you need it. It's a good idea to have it in two places. Don't forget to bring a bag with you that you can take to the islands or maybe excursions in the beaches and so on. Sometimes the cruise lines will provide like a tote that you can take with you, but if you're specific, it's a good idea to bring your own. So keep that in mind. Now, remember extension cords or anything with surge protectors is not allowed on the ship. You basically can't bring anything that has a heating element inside of it. You are allowed curling irons, hair straighteners, and sometimes they also allow hair dryers. That's very much hit, hit or miss. Uh, but things like a baby bottle warmer, that's not allowed. So if you need to be very specific or you need to bring something with you, make sure to check the Cruise Line website because they'll have all of this in great detail. Don't bring anything that has a camo on it. So anything with a camouflage print is actually illegal in Barbados and some other islands. So it's important to basically try to avoid it. So anything that has camo, I would suggest actually leaving that at home. A bag, a bandana, shorts, anything that has camo is actually illegal in Barbados and some other islands. So just don't bring it with you. Don't forget to check the max allowance on alcohol, water, and other things that you can bring with you onto the ship. By the way, I have a dining tips video that gives you a bunch of other really, really good tips. I'll link that video for you above. You definitely want to make sure you check it out after this one. Now your cruise line will also provide you with towels, even the ones that you can take with you on the islands, like the beach towels, they'll usually provide them for you. So I'm not sure if you want to bring them. They take a lot of space. And again, the cruise line provides them. They also provide basic soap, lotion, body wash, shampoo, and conditioner to every room. So you may want to consider leaving those items at home as well. And that, ladies and gentlemen, wraps up all of the packing tips that I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one.